Thank you for listening and supporting The Daily Memphian. Sign up for one of our many free newsletters and breaking news alerts at dailymemphian.com slash email to receive the latest local news stories impacting our community. Our weekly newsletters cover everything from sports to arts and culture, business, food, and more, along with daily updates of all the news we publish each day. Sign up or manage your email preferences at dailymemphian.com slash email. Welcome back to another edition of the Daily Memphians Memphis Grizzlies podcast. This is your host, Grizzlies beat writer Drew Hill, joined as always by columnist Chris Harrington. Um, We're joining you Thanksgiving week early this week. The Grizzlies have played just one game. Um, It was yesterday against the Brooklyn Nets. There's been a lot that's happened since we last talked to you. Some injuries. Um, we, We did know about the Desmond Bain injury, toe injury. Um, but since Ja Morant uh, in the game on Friday night, a win over the Thunder, looked like he was positioning himself for a rebound and kind of got his ankle accidentally kicked, twisted his ankle, went down in front of the uh, scores table right in front of where I was sitting, um, was in a lot of pain, was screaming some profanities, not could not put weight on it coming off the court. And so the concern was very significant <laughs> that it was yeah. going to be a serious injury for Jaw. First place my head went to is, oh my gosh, please don't be an Achilles before I saw the highlight or anything. I was like, oh, that he was in a lot of pain, very clearly. And um, so he comes off the court, and we find out a day later that uh, Jaw has a grade one ankle sprain, which... All things, he's week to week. All things considered, not too bad. He previously has had a grade two ankle sprain, if you remember, um, which he ha- which happened in Brooklyn. He left the game in a wheelchair. Uh, left the court in a wheelchair, I should say, not the game. Left the court in a wheelchair. He was in, he was back in a week or two and a half <laughs> weeks, and it was a three to five week designation. So all some, injuries are different. Some Paul Pierce energy there. All injuries are different, but. Morant has a history of recovering from these things quickly. So I think all things considered, that was probably the best news you could have gotten. If you, It's almost like, and I hate, uh, you know, I'm just going to say it. It's almost like his on-court reaction to the injury sets, sets, sets such a bar that it's easy to clear the bar in terms of return. Because it looked like, oh my God, somebody shot shot Ja, you know, in the game last night, uh, the other night. Yeah, he was hurting, for sure. Uh, and was... then apparently, according to Brandon Clark, he's walking around in the locker room. Yeah. Um and so we'll see. I, I, I agree that the grade one ankle sprain was basically the best case scenario based on what we saw on the floor that night. So I think, you know, it, you know, do you do you not like Ja being out? Sure. But like Ja's not going to play 82 like ever. No. Yeah. And so like missing a week or two with a grade one ankle sprain, I to me, the, it's not, you know. You could almost bake in that that's going to happen at some point about every season, I think. Yeah. Um, I thought, again, like, we had a better idea, I th- I feel like, of Jaron's return. Like, we both were saying the same things because yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we had heard the same sort of things. And I haven't heard anything about this Job Moran ankle injury yet. But um, I, if you're making me guess... I don't think he goes two weeks before playing again because the way of the way that this goes like and he's week to week. Maybe it is exactly two weeks and I end up being wrong. And again, I have no information to suggest one way or another here. I just know that with this history, like he got injured on a Friday. I don't think he's going to play Friday, the following Friday. Right. But is there a chance he plays Sunday against the Knicks? Well, they said week to week. So that leaves the door open for a return next weekend in, in New York. It does. I it mean, does. Yes. Yeah, I mean, based on what they've said, he'll be out a week. But that will be post post one week, and so that, that that could well happen. Do any of these of the like thousand betting sites that exist in the world? Do any of them have like odds on like who who comes back first, the Ja versus Dez versus Zaire Williams? Because they're sort of set up now that yeah, like, they seriously. could all be coming back like relatively close to each other in theory. 
Um, yeah, you would. Ex- so what? When was the the Dez injury was announced on a Tuesday? It was going to be reevaluated ex- in two to three weeks. They yeah. Said. So, if you well, if you reevaluate in two weeks, I mean, you know, who knows, right? I don't think he'll be back that soon. He was in a boot, by the way, at the game. Yeah, I was curious. I don't know if I got to see Ja for sure. I was like trying to differentiate. It looked down on the bench, but I didn't. It didn't look like he was on crutches or anything. At least I couldn't see if he was in a. boot. I couldn't tell not. last night. I know Dez was in a boot because I walked by him in the court in the hallway before the game. I said, "Hey." Des and he said hey probably no idea who it was at this point maybe he does but I, I saw him um before the game on Friday and he was you know walking around in a boot um so I don't know about Ja but I mean based on the various obviously the Zyra injury came first and that was a four to six six week thing and then the Des came after and that was a reevaluate in two to three and now the Ja comes after that and it's a week to week it's all set up that it could be all around the same time yeah um Zaire looks like he's doing a little bit more. Yes. But right. he's still just out every game. And until he gets, um, he, nobody's asked about him. And they're not going to give out any sort of information unless it's asked. No, we have not gotten the doubtful Zaire Williams. Yeah, haven't gotten to doubtful yet. That's typically what they've been doing. We we were questioning whether or not they were going to do that with Jaron on his return. We did indeed get the doubtful than then the questionable. So you're right. kind of just waiting on the doubtful for Zaire Williams to have a heads up that he's going to play the next game. Um in the meantime, it's tough sledding for it the is Memphis tough. Grizzlies. Um, and I think in that game against the Thunder, they had enough to get the job done. They did, also had Ja, you know, for most of that game until the final three minutes when he gets injured. Against well, the Nets. They had Jaron playing out of his mind. Yeah, Jaron. Well, and we need to get to him. Um, but And then the Nets game, which is the most recent game, um, just... You know, I thought, and Jaron doesn't play that game because he's resting. That was a respectable effort with the guys they had. It really was. I, it was a good effort. I thought Dylan played well. Everyone wants to point to 30 shots, 30 shots, 30 shots. And yes, Dylan took, Dylan took, let's just put this in perspective. Dylan took three more shots in that game than John ja Morant has taken in a game this season. That's yeah, how many yeah. shots Dylan Brooks took. Uh, yeah. But um, he made enough. To score 31 points. And honestly, if he's not shooting those, they're not in the game. 30 so. a lot. So, so I did. This will be preview of coming attractions. This will be the second the second item after the lead. The first item after my lead in my column this week, which I'm still writing today. I'll be out around the same time as the pod. But I looked at the Dylan Brooks like shot attempts and, and broke them down in terms of games where John Morant and Desmond Bain both play, games where only one plays, and games where neither play. And... In two games where both have been out, he's averaged 26 attempts. That's a lot. In four games where only one or the other, either Ja or Dez, but not both have played, he's at 19 attempts. And in eight games where he's played with both of them, it's at 13 attempts. And so, you know, to the degree that we're spending the season partly watching, like, you know, does Dylan Brooks, you know, play the right role in the team? I think the shot attempt stuff, to me, looks fine because it's all relevant relevant to, you know, who's on the floor and who's not. The issue is the efficiency. You would think like when you're down to 13 attempts playing off of John Dez, you're taking fewer but better shots and your efficiency goes up. And that's not been the case. He's basically been a 40 percent shooter, regardless of how many shots he takes and who he's playing with or who he's not. And so you'd like to see him be a little bit more efficient. But in a game like Sunday with and most of these Jaron's been out, too. In a game like that with with your top, I think Jaron should be ahead of Brooks in the pecking order. So in a game like that with your top three guys all out, and we've been talking about this, like who's creating shots for this team? You look on the floor, and you got guys who are fairly efficient, but they can't do a lot, like a Conchar or whatever, who's I think played really well. And so 30 is kind of a lot, but I don't know where the shots are coming from with the lineup they were putting on the floor. Yeah, I have no problem with what he did against yeah. Brooklyn. Not none. Because honestly, he can take as many shots as he wants when he works his butt off on defense like he yes. did in that game too. You know, I mean, he played great defense. He kept him in the game, and you're right. Like, do you want Dylan Brooks taking those shots late in the shot clock or, you know, when there's no ball movement, or do you want somebody else trying? I I think I'd rather have Dylan Brooks than other people trying. uh, There may be a few you're okay with. The rotation. Santi Aldama. Not a lot. The rotation they used on Sunday, Dylan Brooks was the best shot creator in the rotation. He just was. In terms of you got the ball – makes create a shot out of nothing go do he was the best option they had and that that that's that says more about the 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 players on the floor than about dylan brooks but that's the reality no that's not reality when you have john moran and desmond bain and jaron and all those guys playing um 
Okay, let's get to Jaron, but first let's take a break for a message from our sponsor. This is a St. Jude moment. Ashton was a high-level athlete, and in a, an instant, your world flips, and your healthy five-year-old competitive cheerleader has a brain tumor. And the physician was like, your best option is St. Jude. Receiving treatment that was life-saving for our child and knowing that that treatment would be of no cost to us was a huge weight lifted. Learn more at stjude.org. Jaron played, he did not play in the game against Brooklyn. He played one of his best games of the season. I don't have the stats right in front of me. Well, he's uh, only, it's only second game of the season. One of the best games of his career. Well, yeah, I, that's that's where I was going. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I thought he was spectacular in that game against the Thunder. He was dominant. He played with both force and precision, I thought, in that yeah. game. He showed you he can get to the basket, dunk on people. He can. I thought he tried to rebound uh, really hard as well, which yeah. was I, I like to see from Jaron. That's kind of the telltale sign that he's going to be aggressive in a game is when he's going after it on the glass. And he also made some threes. And so when he's doing all three of those things offensively. And quietly, only two fouls. Yeah. To play fouls. with that physical yep. force in terms of the rebounds and the dunks and the blocks and the free throws. Like all those are, are signs of, of, of playing with force. All those those indicators. To play with that much force on both ends and only get two fouls for him is kind of a big deal. Yeah. So um, I thought it was a really impressive performance. It was the, you know, what really stinks about it, though, is that <laughs> performance was the type of performance that made you say, man, if the Grizzlies can just get whole, right? right? Like, yeah. because you you had Ja playing pretty well, you had, although he didn't shoot it yeah. perfectly. Five but, of 20, but he was, he was, he was, he, he was, getting he was finding shooters all over the gets. place. Yeah. He was breaking down the defense. Yeah. You had him playing the way he plays. You had Jaron playing with force and you're like, oh man, if they have Dez out there to shoot threes too, if this team just gets whole, they're going to kill some people. Well, Ja goes down in the final three minutes, and right. that's what just made it such a bummer. Uh, watch it like after the game was man, it really felt like Jaron has some momentum, some positive momentum now after just one game. He has positive momentum uh, this season, and you could really see you know sort of his potential. And then all of a sudden, now you're you're short a bunch of guys. I want to give a shout out, and I feel bad like. Because he, he he had his, I think his first post-game media thing of the season was John Conchar, but everyone was so focused on trying to figure out what was going on with Ja, and then you had the Jaron thing. It was sort of like, I threw a couple questions at him just because I felt like somebody needed to. You were still in the locker room, and like I feel like he didn't get his moment because his moment got subsumed by all the other stuff happening. But John Conchar, career-high 19, uh, career-high five three-pointers in that game, double-double with 10 points, and on the week... Another column preview. My my player my player of the week for the last week is John Conchar. With all these guys going out, he played all three games, averaged fifteen points, nine rebounds, four assists, fifty six percent from the floor, and forty seven percent from three on the week. Um, John Conchar's been good this season. Yeah, he he has lived up to their decision to give him a multi year extension early. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, I think this was. I didn't have time to check the career, but. I, this was definitely the first time he scored 15 straight points in consecutive games this season. It might be the only time he's ever done that in his career. It probably um, is. It, it seems like uh, that seems likely. Unless yeah. I, the only thing that I was thinking about was like, all right, maybe last year with the COVID games and people missing time. Right, right, right. Maybe there was no, a couple but, of games. You know, but, 19 and 10 against OKC. Then Sunday sort of flirted with a triple double for yeah. a while in that game. Yeah, yeah. he's been pretty good um, all season long. And I think the main thing for him is. He's got to shoot it as much as he can, <laughs> you know. Like they need volume from John Conchar, especially right in this moment. He has still been a low usage player, and I don't think that's going to change. And he doesn't; he's not going to create a lot off the draw. That's the difference between him and Dylan. Like you can't throw him the ball and like go do something, but he's got to pull the trigger when he sees daylight from three. As a catch and shoot three point shooter, he's got to pull the trigger when he sees daylight, and that's what he's done this season. His three point yeah. frequency is way up, yeah. and his his frequency is way up. He's shooting the same 41% he shot last season, which is great. Yeah. So I asked him, I remember earlier this season, is this the most threes you've ever shot in your career? And he said, I don't, I think like going back to high school, there was one year of high school, I took a bunch of threes, but yeah, I mean, this is, 
by far the most threes. And he he's like, that's that's my role now. I've never played the role of standing behind the arc and shoot, but right. that's what I'm doing now at this point. So, um, yeah, shout out to John Conchar. I think he's played really well. Um, I did get a chance to ask Santi Aldama, finally, if he prefers Santi Claus or if he prefers Slim Spain. And he's he went with Santi Claus. Yeah, I'm sorry. You, you don't get to make that decision. We can't trust players in the realm of um, wordsmithery and, and nicknames. I'm sorry, Santi. I'm not do I am not doing Santi Claus. Now it's slightly better if you do the C L A W S. It is less grotesque if you do it that way, and you have the, the you have the um you have the play on like the bear claws. Even then, I say no. I say I'm not doing it. Okay. I will not contribute to make you do you do you. I'll let you do you. But for me, for me in my house, we're not contributing to Santi Claus as a nickname. I prefer Slim Spain out of the two. Yeah. And I hear Brevin use it because my seat is next to Brevin at the Grizzlies right. home games. So I hear Brevin use it often and it sounds normal to me. It right. does not, you know, I don't have, uh, I don't cringe when I hear that. Santa Claus is rough. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, no, I say no. I, I stand against. I stand. I stand against the, the, the rising tide. I stand in front of history and I say, "Stop! No Santa, no Santa Claus." So yeah, it is a. Uh, it's it, yeah. It, it's 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 a tough decision here uh, because I do like Santi and he he's deserving of some sort of nickname. He's played that well. He's he's of played course. his way to a nickname here. We, you can't but, be trusting players to come up with this stuff on their own. The, I'm just no, saying. no, 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 Santi. Santi we Claus, didn't come up with either of them. I but, believe is John Roser. I believe is John Roser. I refuse to believe that. I have too much respect for John Roser. Wherever it came from, <laughs> wherever it came from, shout out Roser, even though you have some poor music taste sometimes. Um, wherever it came from, you can't, not only can you, can you not, obviously not depend on players to come up with this stuff, but I don't, to me, they don't get to judge it. They do enough. This is our role. Stay in your lane. Know your role, Santi Aldama. That's what I say. Your role is is knocking down threes and attacking closeouts and hitting sweet jump hooks out of the post. It is not weighing in on nicknames. Um, all right, I'm going to uh, I'm going to spring something on you that we haven't planned or talked about. Hey, I, I'm used to that every morning on the Jeff Calkins show. Here we go. We're both going to come up with one thing that the Grizzlies should be thankful for oh, this Thanksgiving. Oh, you're killing okay. Me. Do you want to go first? No, you have to go first. Okay. I, I, haven't, I haven't thought about this. Uh, I think the Grizzlies should let, let, wait, wait, wait. I'm trying to figure out exactly what their record is. The Grizzlies should be thankful um, for the Golden State Warriors being eight and nine to start the season. Oh, that's real similar to what because I was about to say. there is no. Well, you were about to say that the Western Conference is a jumbled mess, right? That's but exactly what I was going to say. I'm going yeah. straight to the Warriors. They should be thankful that the Warriors are off to such a bad start this season because now you don't have to feel bad about your positioning and you still have a Christmas Day game coming up. They should also be thankful for their team trainer, who I can't remember his name straight off the top of my head, but that guy's been a really busy guy so far this year. Be thankful for that guy as well. Okay, your turn. Um, I was going to say, you know, you sort of stole my thunder a little bit on that with the be thankful for the the uh, jumbled Western Conference. We thought, some of us thought, I thought that the um, that the West is going to be tougher at the top, and I don't think it's going to be, and that leaves leaves it all open. I'm I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be even more cloin than you, cloin on top of cloin with the Thanksgiving thing, and be thankful for John Morant forever and always. Did you see this tweet from NBA Communications last week? No, it was about. On Wednesday, De- I'm going to put this in the column too. I'm just doing all my column stuff here in the pod. On Wednesday, De- this is one of my four things I liked last week. On Wednesday, December 14th, fans around the world can celebrate their favorite teams and players by sporting D- NBA, WNBA, or G League jerseys as part of the league's third annual NBA Jersey Day, right? So that's okay. a promotion, and there's a visual on the promotion. Look at this visual. It's got John Moran yes, in this- front of Steph Curry and LeBron James on the NBA jersey. The front. new city edition. Yes, the John new city Morant. edition is in front of the line, and Steph Curry and LeBron James are positioned behind John Morant in the NBA Jersey Day promotion. That to me, that's a little sign of the NBA's internal calculation about like who the star, you know. I mean, John's that, about to be the biggest 
one of the biggest names in the sport. That's what I'm saying. Not I mean, already. Like the shoe thing is it's coming. Um, but like I mean that's that's real. I mean that's I mean that's really puts it out there. Like John Rant in front of Steph and LeBron. Here's on here's one thing Ja can be thankful for. Although it's un although it stinks that he hurt his ankle, it was it's a good thing that he didn't have to answer all those questions about Kyrie Irving <laughs> because oh, he yeah. was hurt. No, that's a good point. He would have had to answer a bunch of questions about Kyrie Irving in New York with the shoe Nike shoe deal falling apart with Kyrie and obviously Ja's gonna be next in line there. He got to avoid all that, at least. If he plays in New York next weekend, though, he's going to have to answer those questions. On one hand, you you know, roughly speaking, maybe you wish, maybe I wish, more NBA players would have spoken out on the Kyrie stuff. On the other hand, maybe we don't really want to hear from NBA players. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, let's just move on to some Thanksgiving stuff here. By the way, I got a response from Gary Parrish, who you called <laughs> Quote, a violent turkey radical. Yes. <laughs> a violent, violent a, 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 turkey a, a, radical. Anti, anti, anti turkey jihadist from <laughs> Gary Parrish. Um, I got a response from him. I sent him the clip and I said, You, you probably want to know that we're talking about you on our podcast. And he said, Ha ha, turkey is terrible, all caps. I'll have a filet on Thanksgiving while you eat a mediocre bird. That's That was his response. Um, you do you, I'll do me. We'll both yeah, be happy on Thanksgiving. That's, that's fine. The way it should be. I don't listen to violent turkey radicals. So, um, yeah. What are, what's your Thanksgiving plans, Chris? You doing a, the full turkey? We we're, we're hosting at our house this year. We don't always, but this year we're hosting, and we are doing. We are we're, we're getting a fresh turkey. I don't know, get Jeff keeps calling it fresh. We're getting a non frozen turkey. Um, this week we will be brining it, wet brine. Overnight wet brine. We will be roasting it in the oven, the golden brown roasted turkey. The whole house will smell like the turkey. And then we'll be doing it super traditional. I'll be making a cornbread andouille dressing with some gravy, with some fresh cranberry sauce, with some mashed potatoes. Um, I'm going to make mac and cheese, which I don't always do, but I am doing that this year. And then uh, we'll have some Sister Schubert trolls, highly traditional. Okay. And then um, I think I've talked my daughter into making a really fancy triple layer uh, brown sugar cake with cran fresh cranberry buttercream frosting. This was a New York Times thing Whoa. that they put out a couple weeks ago, and I forwarded it to her and said, you should make this for Thanksgiving. And I think she's actually going to do it. Does she cook? She bakes. Okay. She bakes. We, we, like her Christmas present a couple years ago, we were some of those big standing mixers, you know, and she's made some fancy cakes before. She's been out of the groove of late because she's too busy being a teenager with like friends and stuff. Right. But I'm trying to get her back in the groove and I think she's going to make a, a big cranberry buttercream cake. Well, we're, we're going doing, all out, man. We're doing the deviled eggs <laughs> because <laughs> we're a joke. <laughs> um, no, uh, yeah, we we really are. That's that's what we're that's what we're bringing to the. That's your contribution, the deviled eggs. Devil eggs. Hey, that yeah. that's a contribution. Um, it's. I mean, who doesn't like a good deviled egg? Seriously, but it's also probably the easiest thing you you can possibly. And we're do. doing most of the stuff since we're hosting, but like my dad is going to bring the rolls and wine, and we told him to bring a green vegetable. Who knows what that'll be? My brother Kyle, I don't know what he'll show up with. My brother Micah tends to do a lot of cooking, but we just want him to show up with the baby. We have a nephew that's like okay. two weeks old. If go. they can show it with the baby, their job is done. Well, our Thanksgiving is going to be spent on a farm. Uh, there you go. We have friends. It's like a southern living photo sort of shoot to me. With. Yep, yep. They have little baby goats. They've got horses in the backyard. So it's going to be a very, uh, you know, a, a good Thanksgiving. And then I'm going to New York for the Grizzlies game against the Knicks. Um, and hopefully... We'll be talking about Ja playing in a game. Maybe not. It seems a little aggressive to think that maybe he would be back by then. But there is a chance, as we discussed earlier. So so you'll be in New York. Is this Saturday or Sunday? Remind I'm trying to pull Sunday. the schedule. You'll be in New York Sunday for the game at Madison Square Garden. I'll be holding down the fort in Memphis on Friday for the post-Thanksgiving game with the Pelicans. That's your favorite game of the year. My favorite game of the year. I like the, the in terms of the schedule, I like the Friday after Thanksgiving. It's a good, good day. Um we're almost certainly not going to have a Jaws Zion game, but what we might have is the, I think, unless I miss something, only the second ever Zion Jaron game. Which would be good. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I was writing that. I mean, we, we don't even know about Zion. Right, we don't. He's point. been out with a foot contusion. They're, they're saying he's going to play tonight against Golden State and he'll come back. So we'll see. Yeah. Day to day. If he, if it, 
is worse after the game. We'll just have to wait. And we got a good game before both of those. Not as good as it would be with John Desmond, but like Sacramento's been really good lately. They're coming in on Tuesday. Yeah. Get ready for a lot of offense in that game. Well, from one team at least. I don't know if the Grizzlies Grizzlies can score enough to keep up with Sacramento, even at home. We'll see. Yeah, you're going to need Jared and Dylan to be spectacular in that one. So lots of good Grizzly stuff coming up. Um, Check out all the food podcasts. Or stuff, all the food stuff. I always plug the food stuff on this podcast. It is Thanksgiving. The, the current pod, the current food pod that's out now is a Thanksgiving theme. We, you know, what we, you and I just talked about, similar, but we spent half an hour on it. So if you want more detail about my Thanksgiving plans and Jennifer's, that's on the pod. I did talk to Jennifer at our company happy hour last week. She did say she was going to invite me onto the food podcast to discuss something, but the deal <laughs> was I have to get her on Gary's show first. So, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to make that happen. Um, I have no expertise in just about anything food related, but, you know, it'd be fun to do it anyway. Everybody eats, man. Everybody eats. Everybody eats. All right. We'll be back next week breaking down all of the fun grizzly stuff that we just discussed that's coming up. Hopefully we'll be talking about some sort of Ja Morant return. But until next time, for Drew and for Chris, thanks for listening. In-depth journalism in the Memphis community, The Daily Memphian is of Memphis, not just in Memphis, and seeks to tell the stories of this city. TheDailyMemphian.com. Truth in place.